Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to show some demonstrations of how I like to use my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that I like to use most and hopefully you'll find it inspiring to your artwork. If uh, you can take a minute and subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate it. If you're returning, thanks for stopping by again. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I do have a, a PayPal me. Uh, account that's listed in the links below and um, I'm grateful for any donations that I receive. Um, please take the time to uh, read my story and uh, watch some of my other videos as well. So let's get started and do some playing with our Caran d'Ache Neo Color Crayons. Um, I've collected these over a course of a couple of years from gift certificates. My brother gives me some great Blick gift certificates for Christmas and I uh, gradually have uh, bought these open stock and purchased a lot of the colors. Uh, probably almost all of the colors. And they are my favorite supply. I have mentioned that in my other video about Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2. Uh, the Neo Color 2 are water soluble, soluble, I can, can't say that word, while you're water soluble, and the Neo Color 1s are not. So if you're looking for something that you can blend with water, you're looking for the Neo Color 2. And in my other video, I did show a tip for um, taking a, a pencil sharpener and sharpening them, adding water, and putting them into half pans. This is my little go-to, not this side, these are some watercolors, but this part are my go-to that I use for um, doing faces. So if I want to do a face, a face design, like here I've just sketched out a simple face, nothing spectacular, just to show you. I can use them from the crayons, I can color with them, but I prefer to use them in my pans. So I just add a little bit of water to each one and then I go in here and pick up the color and use my water brush, my aqua brush, to blend it out onto the face. I find this the easiest way to work and you can just pick up the color from your pan and put it down. It's almost then like using watercolor. So you can go in here and do your shading and your blending. And it's like using, almost like using a watercolor. Okay, so that's how I like to do faces is from the pan or from the crayon. If you don't have half pans to use, then you can take them right from the crayon and tip from the crayon. When I do that, I like to go to the flat end to do my tipping so that I don't misshape the other end for coloring. So you just use your water brush or paintbrush and water and you pick up the color and again, you'd apply that directly to your paper. Okay, so let's see if we're going to add some pink to her face. Again, you'd pick up the color right from the crayon and you'd come in here and they blend out so nicely with water. They're just, because that's what they're meant to do, but they're but they're smooth. I think that's what I like best is they're, they're smooth, they're not gritty. So when you're adding color to something, just in a very quick and simple way, look at how pretty that is. And then if you want to come in here, if this isn't blended out enough for you, then you can go back in and add a little bit more water, reactivate it and move it around some more smooth it out some more if it's not if it's too watercolory see and then it, then it's smooth it's great for doing hair as well on on um, faces same thing go from the end pick up some color come in here and do your hair and it 
just gives such a nice effect. And if you're not doing faces, and you're doing something like flowers, here's a quick flower that I drew. If you, I'll show you the difference, let's see, of coloring with it. You can color this right directly on the paper. And then use your water brush. And you kind of have to go in a little bit of a scrubbing manner to activate it and to blend it out. And that gives, to me, that gives a nice effect if you want it to look, hopefully you can see that, you can kind of still see the crayon lines unless you really scrub it well. And on it, this is a slightly textured paper. It's just Canson Mixed Media water paper. But if you want it a little smoother and you tip from the crayon, and you take the color right off the end of the crayon and go on here, it's a little bit smoother. But it's just another way of doing it. Okay. And that's with my lines pre-drawn and that with a pen that is uh, waterproof. And my favorite one to use is Tombow Mono drawing pens. I have tried every kind of drawing pen and Tombow Monos do not move no matter what. So I love them the most. They don't bleed and I can do a lot with them and you can go over them after this is dried. So say you want to do a flower and you don't want to draw it out. You can come in here and do a watercolory type of flower and just use your brush and in a painterly way paint your petals okay and then we're going to let that dry and we'll come in and we'll add some more okay and while that's drying I'll show you that you can also use a piece of glass. So if you have some colors and you want to mix them, you can color right onto your glass. Put two different colors down on your glass. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then when you add water, you can blend them together to make a completely different color. and then use that on your page. And now you have created your own custom color. So customizing them is super easy by doing it on a piece of glass. And then it just wipes away with a Kleenex. You can wipe it away to clean your glass. Super easy. So that's if you want to make some different colors. If, if this isn't enough or you don't have very many, and I'm sure people will ask, this stand that I'm using is a pen stand that my dad actually modified for me. He cut the little pegs down shorter, and I've stood all my Neo Color crayons up in it. I like that, so that's in case you want to know how I'm storing them. Um, anyway, you can take and make make yourself some really fun and interesting colors by coloring on the glass. Add a second color. Add a third color, do whatever, and then mix them together and see what you get. And that made a gorgeous periwinkle kind of blue. So if you only have a small set, try mixing them. Get a piece of glass and do some mixing. Look how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. Can make a little forget-me-not flower in that blue. And watch how simple that is. Okay. So now this is dry. This red that we did, this is dry. So let's do that. Let's use our technique on our glass. Let's add some the red that we used the first time and then a different red. Let's go a little bit deeper and use this red. And let's mix the two together. See what we come up with. And then go back into your drawing and add some dimension and some highlights to it. 
And one fun thing about flowers is they're very versatile. Look how pretty that is. And we created a color to add to that. Now if I want to add a little more to it or go a different color, let's add some orange hue to it. Let's pick some orange up and just throw a little bit of orange in there. Mm, that's pretty. So now you have three different colors that you've used. And the other fun thing about glass, okay, I was going to wipe away what I didn't use here, and instead I'm going to add to it, I'm going to add a little bit more to it, a few more other colors. Okay, on my glass. And then what I'm going to do is mist it with some water. activate it and then I'm going to take a piece of my paper and just put it over it rub the back of it and I've created a really fun background So if you want to add that to the background of your art journal page and then let it dry and do some doodling over it, that is just a really fun thing. You could do it to tags. You could also do it with tags. But I like doing that as a background in my art journal pages just to create something really pretty. And it dries relatively quick and then it's really easy to doodle over it. And I'll show you what that looks like with my pen. Okay, and I also like to use the use the Caran d'Ache Neo Color to use with stamps, either a foam stamp or a regular rubber stamp. And what I like to do, I use them on my backgrounds. In fact, I could show you on this piece that I just did that cool funky background is kind of dry. So I'm going to take a color and I'm going to color it on here on my glass. Add a little bit of water. Just kind of blend it out with my finger and it wipes off of your finger it's not like a dye ink so if you wipe it off it wipes right off and it doesn't stain that's another plus for using it so now I'm going to go in with a foam stamp right over that and I'm gonna ink up a foam stamp and go right over here and stamp with it and it makes just a really pretty addition to my background and then when that dries that'll blend in so I like to use it with stamps and let me show you with a regular rubber stamp sure I've inked it well with the Caran d'Ache. Just activate it with water and pick it up with your stamp. So you can use it as ink for your stamp as well and it cleans off of your stamps nice and easily just like it does your fingers. So you can use it that way. Okay now here is our flower that we drew and I'm going to take my uh, Tombow mono drawing pen and I'm going to just come in here and add some pen work to this just to show you how nicely that you can ink right over the Neo colors so you can come in and sketch and we can make this more, look more like a poppy by adding some pen work to it. And I'm going very simplistic on this 
because I'm holding it up at a funny angle, but even so, it still turns out just lovely. See, we made a flower out of that by using a couple colors, a Neo color, letting it dry, and then adding our design work over it. And we can do the same thing with this cute little flower we made that looks like a... Uh, I think they're called a morning glory. Very fun. Easy. This is why I like them so much, Neo Colors, because they're so versatile and I use them in my art journals quite a bit. You can also use them in your altered books too. They're great for coloring backgrounds. Say you've got a altered book background and there's lots of texture and you want to go in and you want to add some color to it. You can do your, um, your coloring onto the glass and then use your water brush to pick it up, blend it out. But you can also use other things too. So. You can take some clear gesso and you can take a color that you want to add to a background like some yellow ochre and color it onto your glass and then use a paintbrush and move that over that's getting a glare from my light and you mix your clear gesso with what you've colored on here and you end up with some really pretty color that you can add on your altered book page over texture and it'll go right over the texture. See it makes like a wash and when it dries the difference will be when you use it with water, when you use the crayons with water, they will still remain pretty uh, water activated. After they've dry, been dry for a while, they won't be as active um, as they are like right after you do them. But if you use a gesso, a clear gesso, when it dries, it's going to stay put. So you could use this over your background or blending it or doing whatever you want with it over your background. and once it dries it's not going to be you're not going to water activate it again it's going to be more permanent you can also do that with a clear gesso it comes out transparent like this if you use a white gesso here's a white let's do the same thing with white and the same color just as a test let's leave it out Mix it up again. Look at the difference. It becomes opaque. So it's still that pretty color, but it's more opaque. So it's going to be creamier. You can do that with your faces as well. If you're doing portraits and you can do the base color using it with a white or a clear gesso then when it dries it doesn't move so when you go back in and you're adding more layers to get the depth of your face that you're drawing this is kind of a, a neat way to go because then it won't move around on you but it becomes really creamy here and here it's translucent that's with um, clear gesso and white gesso and then you can also make a wash with it let's take it one more time color some color on there and now I'm going to use varnish and what you're going to get with a varnish this is a matte varnish it's not a gloss but if you wanted a glossing use a glossy varnish with this and you can make all kinds of glazes to put over your altered book stuff or on your uh, art journals but look at the difference with a varnish it becomes like a glaze and because this is a matte varnish when it dries it's going to be matte color but look at that gorgeous glaze. So the nice thing about that is you don't have to have a million different products if you've got your neo colors and all, all the different colors and then you've got your your base mediums you can do all different kinds of things with it. You can make a glaze, you can make this nice toothy creamy color that's opaque 
you can make a transparent color so it becomes a mixed media product that you can use in many many different ways depending on what you're mixing it with water is you know water would be something that would be movable in fact let's do that in our comparison next to these let's take that same color and do it with water and show you the difference with that there. so you've got it mixed with water clear gesso white gesso and matte varnish you can also do it with matte gel medium as well and the same thing you're going to get kind of like you did with these with the varnish you're going to get a nice glaze when you mix it with matte gel medium so you can glaze over something and then when it dries that pigment is not going to move another tip that i like to do i love when i do artwork my favorite thing is to add splatters so what i like to do is go to the end of my crayon on the flat surface and out of water for my water brush and I like to swirl it around so I get some good pigment in there and so now you've got the pigment on your brush and then I tap it onto the page and I get my splatters of color so think of the options you'd have. You have these neo colors and you have all these different colors and you can make any color splatter you want just like that. And then just leave it alone, let it dry. You wanna add some more, come back, pick up some more. You just, the tip to that is you have to make it kind of juicy in order to make it splatter. But look how pretty that is. Just look at those beautiful splatters. That's my favorite. And then again, if you want to do, um, if you want to do drips and droplets, same thing. I do the same thing. Go to the end of that. Add a drop of water. Get it nice and juicy at the end. Pick some up. Come up to the top of your artwork. Put it on there. Squeeze a little bit of water out, and do your drops. And I'll show you what it looks like when it dries. And then pick up some more, add some more. So if you love that look of having drips and drops on your page, use your water brush and squeeze some water out and add your color and then let it dry and once it dries it, it will lighten up just a slight bit you can go back in and do it again and you'll have all these layers of droplets I mean the drips it just looks really dimensional that way and not so flat and I do always wipe my crayon off before I put it back in the stand so it's not messy so that's splattering and doing drips and then the other way you can make drips is to just take the crayon do some coloring, take your spray bottle, spray it to activate it, and drip it. It's a totally different look. If you want to blend colors, they're very blendable. So you can take a couple of colors and you can color with them. And then add your water. And look how those colors blend. Gorgeous. pretty. Now I can still see the color lines, but that's because this paper has a little bit of a toothy texture to it. 
So if I go over it one more time, and that blends out those lines. Pretty. That's why I like these so much. There. Okay, so let's go ahead and make more of a background here. Doing some coloring. Let's go in here with another color. How about a green? Just for fun, say this was an art journal page in my art journal book. Sorry that wasn't on camera. There we go. I just took four colors and just colored with it. And now I'm going to blend it out with a little scrubby motion. I'm going to go over the whole page like that and just blend out those colors. Okay, so we let that dry. I blended that out with water and then I let it dry. It's not 100% dry, but close enough. Now I'm going to come in with a stencil and I'm going to put a stencil over that and I'm going to use a baby wipe and I'm going to go over this with a baby wipe. I know, for those of you who don't like baby wipes, please don't comment. I don't have a baby, so I think I'm, I'm entitled to use my share of baby wipes. Okay, so when you rub that, and you rub it off, and then you remove that, look what you have for a background. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then, I'm sure you could probably take what's on the back and pounce it down, but there's just another technique. So you colored that background, you added some water, you let it just briefly dry. Now it doesn't have to be 100% bone dry. I'm gonna just clean this off over here. And that even makes, look at that, gorgeous. Just cleaning my stencil and that little bit of pigment that's left made a beautiful pattern. Pretty fun. I'm going to let that dry and then we can even go in with some pen. Okay, that's dry. Now I'm going to go back in with my pen and just go around these shapes. Wouldn't have to do this. This is just an idea. You could do it in white, a white paint pen or a black, and then just outline some of that design. Here's with a paint pen. This is a Posca paint pen. And I'm just kind of freeform going around those images, but look how pretty that is. So just some fun and different ways to do, we should use it as a background. Here's what our drips look like dried. That looks like a microburst, the one that we colored, sprayed it with water and let it run. And then these drips have dried and they do make different, like around the edges darker. And then again, you could go back in again Let's even take another color, a different color. I'm going to take a different color here and do the same thing. Go on the flat end. Get it nice and creamy and juicy. Pick it up here, go to my design. Add a little bit of water, squeeze in my pan. And letting it drip. This is with a second color. That's pretty. And when that dries, that'll look really pretty and three-dimensional. 
Let's try adding a, a green. Let's pick up some green here and try that. A bubble in it that's interesting and if it's not dark enough pick up some more pigment do it again if you want it a little greener that's pretty so that's fun shows you some different ways of making a background doing some splattering tipping it from the bottom of the pan coloring with it and blending them making your background and blending it out and then using a stencil and a baby wipe and removing some of that color, using it on in something you've already drawn. Or using it on the paper and then doing ink work over it, using it for faces. Again, see it can activate it again. It's already been dried a while, but if it's not smooth enough, you can activate it again and smooth it out even more. And if you don't want it activated, you're going to want to add it to um, some clear gesso. You can do your washes with, with water, clear gesso, white gesso, varnish. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use it and on a lot of different pro projects. And then of course, always add your speckles. I love the splatter speckles. So there's a couple ways of doing your, your dripping and drops and hopefully you've enjoyed this. And again, you know, it, it's great when it dries. It's nice and smooth. It's not gritty or grainy. So you can go back over it with a paint pen or a, a waterproof pen. If you tried to reactivate this with water, it is going to move. So if you want to do something over it, you are going to need to seal it. You can use a fixative spray to seal it. Otherwise, it is going to reactivate and move just a little. It doesn't, it doesn't move a lot after it's been really, really dry. But it will shift just a tiny bit, so just so you're aware of that. But they're way fun. They're my favorite. Hopefully this gave you some ideas to use Karen Dosh Neo Color Crayons. And stamping with rubber stamps and foam stamps. I use them in my art journal a lot. So like this. That's all done with Neo Color Crayon. And it's from tipping it off the crayon. I, I don't usually color with it. I usually use a, just a water brush in my crayons and just pick up color and color right onto the paper. You know, made these drips down the side. Of course, did my splatters in a different color. I did this background in Neo Color by just picking some up off the base of the pen and doing kind of a water paint like background, letting it dry completely, and then going in and doing some Zen Tangle designs with my waterproof pen. Same with this, Neo Color. Just pick it up and made the design lightly on the page and then went back in and added the pen work to make this dragonfly. So there's a lot of fun ways to use it and I use it every day when I sit down in my little art journals and play. That's what I use as my Neo Color. Hope you give them a try too. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not getting paid by anybody. That's just, this is just my opinion. So, and I thought you'd like to see some different techniques of how to use them. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks and have a great day.